नमस्कार दोस्तों स्वागत है आप सभी का आपका और हमारा YouTube चैनल नर्स एंड कैरियर क्लब में दोस्तों हमें उम्मीद है कि आपने हमारा पिछला वीडियो जरूर देखा होगा यदि किसी कारणवश नहीं देख पाए हैं तो डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स में दिए गए लिंक पे क्लिक करके अवश्य देखें हमें उम्मीद है आपको हमारा वीडियो जरूर पसंद आएगा यदि आपको हमारा वीडियो पसंद आता है तो इसे लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब करना ना भूलें तो आइए दोस्तों आज हम बीएससी नर्सिंग थर्ड ईयर के चाइल्ड हेल्थ नर्सिंग सब्जेक्ट में से यूनिट फाइव डिस्कस करते हैं यूनिट फाइव का नाम है नर्सिंग मैनेजमेंट इन कॉमन चाइल्डहुड डिजीजेस इसमें भी पर्टिकुलरली आज हम डिस्कस करते हैं न्यूट्रिशनल डेफिशियंसी डिसऑर्डर्स ऑब्जेक्टिव निम्न प्रकार हैं, लाइक व्हाट इज पीईएम व्हिच इज डिस्कस इन स्लाइड नंबर फोर टू फाइव देन एक्सप्लेन अबाउट क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ पीईएम व्हिच इज डिस्कस इन स्लाइड नंबर सेवन टू एट देन एक्सप्लेन अबाउट इकोलॉजी ऑफ पीईएम व्हिच इज डिस्कस इन स्लाइड नंबर नाइन देन लिस्ट आउट द क्लिनिकल मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ पीईएम व्हिच इज डिस्कस इन स्लाइड नंबर इलेवन टू सिक्सटीन and then enumerate the diagnosis of PEM which is discussed in slide number 17 and explain the management of PEM which is discussed in slide number 18 to 27 now let's discuss about protein energy malnutrition so if you talk about definition then the term PEM which represent P for protein E for energy and M for malnutrition. So the term PEM refers to a group of disorder that include marasmus and quasi occur. So marasmus, if you talk about marasmus, then this term is derived from Greek word marasmus, which means wasting. So it occurs due to inadequate intake of protein and calories and this is characterized by weight loss of subcutaneous fat and if you talk about quasi occur then quasi occur means sickness of weaning so it involves inadequate intake of protein and it is characterized by presence of edema Our first practice question is the term marasmus is derived from the Greek word uh, das first marasmus second myonis and third marasus so our answer is option A marasmus as we had already discussed in slide number 5 that the term is derived from the Greek word marasmus which means wasting Now let's uh, discuss about classification of PEM that is protein energy malnutrition so here we can see weight for age classification by gomez so gomez has given um, some formula that is weight for age percentage equals to weight of the child upon weight of the normal child of the same age into 100 and if we for example if weight for age is uh, if weight for age is greater than 90% then it means normal if it is between 76 to 90% then it means first degree malnutrition and and if it is between 61 to 75% then it indicates second degree malnutrition and if it is less than or equals to 60 percentage then it includes third degree malnutrition so water loss classification on the basis of height for is which gives the formula like height for is percentage equals to height of child upon height of the normal child of the same age into 100 so if height for age is 
greater than 95% then it means normal if it is between 90 to 95% then it means mild malnutrition if it is between 85 to 90% then it means moderate malnutrition and if it is if it is less than 85% then it indicates severe malnutrition so now let's discuss about etiology of pem so in etiology we can see first inadequate food intake second increased protein and energy requirement third immature immune system fourth risk of infection fifth exposed to non hygienic condition sixth ineffective weaning next economic and cultural factors next decreased absorption or abnormal metabolism so our second practice question is the etiology factor of pem is first increased protein and energy requirement second decreased protein and energy requirement third increased food intake so our answer is option a that is increased protein and energy requirement as we had already discussed in slide number 9 that the etiological factor of pem is increased protein and energy requirement so now let's discuss about clinical manifestation so first we see marasmus condition so in marasmus we can see growth retardation severe muscle wasting loss of subcutaneous fat skin appear dry inelastic and risk of skin infection here are hypopigmented and a ear dull brown or yellow in color abdomen is distended due to muscle wasting so mid arm circumference is reduced bony points appear prominent children may be alert but irritable the face of the child taken and is to look due to loss of subcutaneous fat of cheeks and the temperature is usually subnormal and pulse is slow our third practice question is the clinical manifestation of marasmus is first fever second loss of subcutaneous fat third stiffness of muscles so our answer is option b loss of subcutaneous fat so we had already discussed in slide number 10 that the clinical manifestation of marasmus is loss of subcutaneous fat and muscle wasting you can see the diagram you can see the diagram of both marasmus and quasi vocal condition so in marasmus condition you can see the muscle wasting and loss of subcutaneous fat whereas in quasi vocal you can see the presence of edema and moon face now let's see the clinical manifestation of quasi vocal in this we can see growth retardation and failure to thrive so failure to thrive means uh, inability to gain weight according to their uh, age which is called as failure to thrive. So in quasi worker we can see both conditions like growth retardation and failure to thrive. Next muscle wasting with retention of some sub subcutaneous fat, psychomotor changes, lack of interest about the surroundings, lethargy, dullness and loss of appetite. Next, edema especially over the tibial region due to hypoalbuminemia and increased capillary permeability with damaged cell membrane. 
Now let's see about non-essential features. So uh, for non-essential features, we can see here change. In this, we can see light colored here or reddish thin, dry and silky. Child may have alopecia, moon-like face, pot belly or protruding abdomen, fatty liver is seen, nail plates are thin and soft. Repeat infection of GI tract with diarrhea, vomiting, anorexia and dehydration. Skin changes we can see. It is found initially with erythema and hyperpigmented skin patches, but later it found as hypopigmented petit, which appear like old paint, old paint falking off the surface of the wound, which is also called as fakey paint dermatitis. Now let's see about diagnosis. So for diagnosis, first is history collection, second is physical examination, next we can do anthropometric assessment like uh, reduce weight for A's, weight for height, height for A's, blood examination, stool examination for the presence of any ova or parasite, urine examination shows decreased urine output. So now let's discuss about management. So what we can do to manage nutritional deficiency disorders. So management will depend upon following principles. Like first, the patient is evaluated for severity of PEM, comma, other nutritional deficiency like iron deficiency leading to anemia and fluid and electrolyte disturbance. Second thing we can do is prompt treatment of any uh, present or any persistent complications. Next, promotion of food intake which helps in reducing the duration of hospital stay and also facilitate rehabilitation. And then, Epidemiological factors responsive for malnutrition are prompt to meet to eliminate them. Management of PEM can be divided into two phases. First, initial phase and second, rehabilitation phase. So now, let's discuss our first phase that is initial phase. Uh, that is between one to two weeks. It includes treatment of complications like hypoglycemia, hypothermia, infection, electrolyte disturbance, dehydration, deficiency of nutrients. And second we can do is initiation of feeding. Feeding should be initiated as early as possible. If oral feeding is not possible, nasogastric feeds should be given. Milk based diet is more suitable to start with sugar and oil may be added to milk. To provide extra calories after 9 weeks, intake of protein and calories is increased to 2 to 3 gram protein per kg per day and 150 kilocalorie per kg per day. So total amount of fluid should be kept within 100 to 125 ml per kg per day. So now let's discuss about second phase that is rehabilitation phase that is between 2 to 6 weeks. It includes recovery of lost weight, 
emotional and physical stimulation of the child training to mother for home care of the child preparation of discharge and nutritional planning it involves a political commitment by the government formulation of a nutritional policy and planning to improve production and supplies of food and ensure its distribution so we can see prevention at community level so for prevention at community level we need to do health and nutritional education promotion of education and literacy in the community growth monitoring which is very important not only growth monitoring but it should be regular growth monitoring and integrated health packages vigorous promotion of family planning programs to limit the family size and what we can do for prevention at family level exclusive breastfeeding of of infants for first 6 month of life should be vigorously promoted and encouraged complementary foods should be introduced in the diet of infant at the age of 6 month vaccination atrogenic restriction of feeding in fevers and diarrhea should be discouraged adequate time should be allowed between two pregnancies so as to ensure proper infant feeding and attention to the child before the next conception national nutrition policy so national nutrition policy includes icds program which is called as integrated child development services program national program of mid day meal school national nutrition anemia prophylaxis program so with this we have completed our topic so dosto agar aapko hamare topic se related koi bhi confusion hai to aap description box mein ja ke comment kar sakte hain agar aapko hamara video pasand aata hai to ise like share एवं सब्सक्राइब जरूर करें थैंक यू